thank you for the great miracles, signs, and wonders you have done through your anointed servant. Lord, we thank you because it has been a time we have been waiting for, and we have seen the experiences and the great expectation that we have through this supernatural power of God working in our midst. And we say, Lord, we thank you. This is another time of receiving prayer once again. Lord, we pray that in this Sunday worship service session, you'll anoint your servant the more. And greater things will happen this day in Jesus' name. Amen. As we start in this touch the scripture session, Lord, I pray that you bless everyone. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Last week, we learned about genealogy and birth of Christ. In that lesson, we learned that since God has promised that the Messiah must be the descendant of Abraham and David, it becomes necessary to show through records that our Lord Jesus Christ had the proper genealogy to qualify him as the Messiah. We also learned in that lesson that the purpose of Jesus coming into the world is to save mankind from the ruin of sin, which he accomplished through his vicarious death on the cross at Calvary. And that anyone who repents from sin and comes to him for salvation will receive pardon and cleansing through his blood. That leads us to today's lesson, lesson nine, you know, such the scripture titled, The Ministry of John the Baptist. Shall we all say it together? Once again, Thank you. And one um, of um, the verse is taken from Matthew chapter 3, verse 3. Matthew chapter 3, verse 3. Do we have someone from the choir to please uh, help us uh, recite that? First, please. On the fire, the memory bus. Matthew chapter 3, verse 3. For this is the voice of one crying in the wilderness, saying, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Thank you. Our text is taken from Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. Uh, we want a first reader, a brother to read that. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. And then Luke chapter 3, verse 1 to 22. We also want a first reader, a sister, to take that very fast, please. Now let's start with Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. Matthew chapter 3, verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a leaden girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. Then went out to him, Jerusalem, and all Judea, and all the region round about Jordan, and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, O generation of vipers, who had warned you to flee from the wrath to come, bring forth therefore fruit meet for repentance, and think not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham our father. For I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe is laid up unto the root of the trees. 
Therefore, every tree which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee, Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and cometh thou to me. And Jesus answering said unto him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straight way out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, and lightning upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Thank you so much. Uh, Luke chapter 3, verse 1 to 22. A sister. Now in the 15th year of the reign of Silvatus, the same Titus, Pilot, being governor of Judea, and Herod, being treated of Galilee, and his brother Philip, and his brother P Philip, patriarch of Ithurian, and of the region of Tracolatite, and Lysanias, the patriarch of Abilene, Annas, and Kephas, being the high priest, the word of God came unto John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness, and he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the, bap the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins, and it is written in the book of the word of Isaiah, the prophet, saying, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Every valley shall be filled, and every mountain and hill shall be brought low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough ways shall be made smooth, and all flesh shall see the salvation of God. Then said he to the multitude that came forth to be, to be baptized of him, O generation of vipers, who had who had warned you to flee from the road to come, be, bring forth therefore fruit worthy of repentance, and begin not to stay within yourselves. We have Abraham to our father, for I say unto you that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the, the axe is laid upon the road of the trees, Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit is healed down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? He answered and said unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none. And he that hath meat, let him do likewise. Then came on also publicans to be baptized. And said unto him, Master, what shall we do? And he said unto them, Exert no man that, 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 that which is appointed to you. And the soldiers likewise demanded of him, saying, And what shall we do? And he said unto them, Do violence to no man, neither accuse any falsely. And he contend with your wages. And as the people were in expectation, and all men most in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not. Then John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh the latch chest of whose shoes I am not worthy to be unloosed. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his flow 
and will gather the wheat into his, uh, into his garner. But the chaff he will burn with fire on quench Jebus. And many other things in his exhortation preach he unto the people. But Herod the tetrarch, stretch, being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother, Philip's wife, and for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying the, and praying the heaven was opened, and the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son. Indeed, I am well pleased. And Jesus Thank himself... Thank you very much. But we'll stop, we'll stop at verse 52. Thank you. John, John's ministry ended the 400 years of uh, intertestament since his silence, where there was no known prophet or open prophecy that lived that time and that existed that time. John lived up to his predicted appearance by delivering firing and focused messages that he delivered effectively to all who came to listen to him. And uh, even though his ministry was short, we can see from the scriptures that John successfully delivered his mandate to preach repentance and turn the hearts of the people to the way of the Lord. There are three things we are going to consider in our search the scripture this morning. Number one, profile of the man, John the Baptist. Profile of the man, John the Baptist. Point number two, the purpose of the ministry of John the Baptist. The purpose of the ministry of John the Baptist. And then point number three, the promise of power through John the Baptist. Looking at point number one, in Matthew chapter 3, verse 1 to 4, in Matthew chapter 3, we read from verse 1 to 4. In those days came John the Baptist, preaching the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair, and the leathern girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. John was born to his aged parents, Zachariah, at 99 years, and Elizabeth, when she was 89 years. And his birth was a clear fulfillment of the prophecy. In Isaiah chapter 43 and chapter 40, verse 3. Look at that, Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. Look at the prophecy concerning the birth of John the Baptist. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. The voice of him that cried in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So you can see here that this is a testimonial of the power of God to do the impossible. That the parents were so aged, and yet God, through his power, made it possible for John the, John the Baptist to, you know, was given back to. Now you can see here that um, it is beyond the extraordinary circumstances that surrounded his birth, we can see also that John portrayed the following sterling qualities as we've read from the text uh, we read earlier. And what are these qualities? Number one, discipline. His life was devoid of flamboyancy and hypocrisy. Indeed, he lived within his means and was conservatively contented. You can see that in Matthew chapter 3, verse 4. Not only that, John was humble with, uh, with no record of self-glorification despite the fact that he enjoyed popularity. He was quick to point to one mightier than him. And that if you look at it, for example, look at how this humility is demonstrated in Luke chapter 3, verse 16. In Luke chapter 3, verse 16. 
look at the humility of John the Baptist demonstrated there. John, John answered, saying unto them, All, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the likest of whose shoes I am not worthy, and lo, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and uh, with fire. Now, only that we can see life of content, commitment, the life of John. He was unwavering in his commitment to his ministry and uh, to point the world to Christ. You can see that in the book of uh, John chapter 1, verse 29. Not only that, John was submissive. He submitted himself to God's will and waited until it was time for him to be introduced to the people. He did not go ahead of God. Not only that, John was focused. He lived a focused and purposeful life right until his martyrdom. Question number one. What challenge does John the Baptist's life pose to ministers and believers? Uh, can somebody uh, please answer that question fast, so very fast, please? We see humility, discipline, and commitment. Thank you very much. Point number two. Purpose of the ministry of John the Baptist. In John chapter 1, verse 6. In John chapter 1. Let's look at, let's open to the Bibles. The book of John, chapter 1, verse 6 to 8. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same, come, the same came for a witness, to be a witness of the light, that all men through him might believe. He was not the light, but was sent to be a witness of that light. The purpose of John the Baptist's ministry was predetermined before he was born. As a matter of fact, we need to understand that John the Baptist's ministry was fulfilled the following, uh, the following. Number one, he was to prepare the way for Christ. As we have read in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, as prophesied. Not only that, number two, is to prepare the hearts of men to receive Christ as the expected Messiah. Not only that, John the Baptist was to point Christ to the nation of Israel. You can see that in John chapter 1, verse 29. Let's look at that. John chapter 1, verse 29. See the purpose of the ministry of John the Baptist. John chapter 1, we read from verse 29. The Bible says, The next day John said Jesus coming unto him and says, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. Not only that, John was to rebuke evildoers and point them to the path of rectitude. And then number five, he was to warn the people of God's impending judgment on evil doers. See, as he warned the people in Luke chapter 3 verse 9, look at it in the scriptures, how he warned the people of God's impending judgment. In the book of Luke, Luke chapter 3, we read from verse 9. And now also, the axe is laid unto the root of the tree. Every tree, therefore, which bringeth not forth good fruit, is hand down and cast into the fire. So you can see here that John the Baptist warned the people of God's impending judgment on evil uh, doers. Not only that, we can also learn from John's approach to fulfilling God's purpose for his life, that he did not go outside the jurisdiction of God's call, and that he was consistent with his message of repentance, regardless of the class and status of the people he was preaching to. What a lesson for us. That as we go out, we don't look at people's faces. We don't look at what people will say, but we preach the gospel, you know, irrespective of the status and the class of the people we reach out to. Question number two. What was John sent ahead of the Lord Jesus? Why was John sent ahead of the Lord Jesus? Why? Why was John sent ahead of the Lord Jesus? Yes, first please. He was sent to prepare the way of the Lord to reveal uh, to the people sin and the impending judgments of God. 
Thank you very much. Question number three, what can we learn from John's approach fulfilling God's purpose for his life? Yes, the next person to answer that. What we learned there is that we should not fear people, we should not mind their status, we should preach the word of God. Yes, we can learn also from his approach that he did not go outside the jurisdiction of God's call in his life and he was consistent with his message of repentance regardless of the class and status of the people he was preaching to. Point number three before we pray. The promise of power through John the Baptist. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, uh, we have seen uh, when the Bible tells us that you shall receive power. When Christ, you know, prophesied and, uh, you know, uh, told us in John chapter, in, in, when it was told of, of us that we shall receive power. But before that time, John preached about baptism of the Holy Spirit in Luke chapter 3, verse 16. Luke chapter 3, we read from verse 16. Look at that. John answers saying, unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I come in the latchet of whose shoes I'm not worthy to unload. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and uh, with fire. So you can see here right from the inception of his ministry, John was forced to teach on the baptism of the Holy Ghost before Christ pronounced it later in his ministry. Another glorious event that took place during John's ministry was that he was the manifestation of Godhead just after the baptism of Christ. If you look at Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. Matthew chapter 3, verse 16. And, Je and Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I'm well uh, pleased. So you can see here that this fulfilled promise of the baptism of the Holy Spirit uh, further reinforces the fact that all the, all the people or all who aspire to be a bonnie and shining light for Christ, just like John the Baptist, have been abundantly provided for. And therefore, the promised Holy Ghost baptism is for all who will hunger and thirst for it. Not only that, we can see here that as we consider the minister of John the Baptist, John was a bonny and shiny light and remains a worthy example and a role model for all who go into ministry and seek to please the Lord in all things. Beyond the godly virtues that have been highlighted so far, John was courageous, he was conscientious, he was compassionate and caring. In fact, we can say in summary that there are virtues we can emulate from the life of John the Baptist and that is to be courageous, compassionate, consecrated, cautious, and Christ-centered. And I pray the Lord will help us that all these virtues we have seen in the life of John of the Baptist will be replicated in our lives in Jesus' name. A louder amen. amen. Question number six. How can a believer be a bonny and shiny light like John? Very fast, please. How can a believer be a bonny and shining light like John? Praise the Lord. A believer can uh, remain courageous and straight to the message of the Lord, which will be given to the congregation that will help him to remain steadfast. Yeah, we said by getting baptized in the Holy Ghost and going forth in his power to do the work of God. Question number seven, finally. What other virtues can we emulate in John? That's what uh, some of the things our brother said. Virtues. He was compassionate, consecrated, and he was passionate for the gospel. He was Christ-centered, Christ-minded. Thank you so much. Now, we have seen these virtues in the life of John the Baptist. I pray God will help us emulate and to practice these virtues as we go forth in the power of the Holy Spirit to win souls to the Lord. And especially now that we have more resources to use, we use social media, all kinds of uh, resources available that John did not have. And I believe 
As John fulfilled his ministry, we too will fulfill our ministry in Jesus' name. Let's rise up and go to the Lord in prayer. Commit to accept the hand of the Lord. Commit the story we have heard, all that we have heard, that God will help us to be doers of the word and not the hearers of the word. Our Father, we thank you for how you have spoken to us today. We have seen the ministry of John the Baptist clearly, and uh, we have seen examples to follow. And that, Lord, is our prayer that help us that all these virtues we have seen in him grant us the grace to also practice, to emulate, and to go out and preach the gospel and bring souls unto the Lord in Jesus' name. Lord, we pray that not just John the Baptist, we have a practical example here, the person of our Father in the Lord. He has taught us and he's leading us. Oh God, we pray as Father, as children, we shall follow and we will fulfill our ministries in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, for the answer. As we continue, continue with us. In Jesus' name, we'll pray. Amen. Let us shout a better. Amen. Amen.